Hi guys, so uh, I debated just doing a video just talking about what the swap is going to be or if I should just open the uh, signups. It has been crazy weeks and months for me, so it's been super busy. Uh, the swap for me is just pure fun. Like that's why I offer it and that's why we do them and we get to interact and everyone in our little community kind of, you know, gets to interact in a really fun way. And um, then I had a lot of obligations with companies like to make videos and to get those out at certain times and certain launches and certain deadlines. And it has been crazy right now. And it's still crazy right now. So um, I would like to get this video going, but again, I, I suppose um, this will be the sign up. I mean, what's the point of going through all the rules and talking about it if uh, I'm just going to say, hey, wait till another day to sign up. So um, there are going to be some changes. This is going to be the favorite paper pack or paper collection. Thank you, Ephemera folders. Okay, <laughs> swap. Um, I did, I was going to leave it just at that and like no paper clippy or anything like that, but. We need a clippy, right? We need to close it up. So let me go, turn off my alarm to go pick up Miranda. I'll be right back. Hell yeah. Um, and it's just the reason I'm doing a thank you because I think it's very pretty much universal. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a little bit different um, with my folder swaps. I have done like slimline ones, but generally it's a five by seven folder. But this time I want you to include three um, pieces of cardstock that are five by seven. So the folder is going to be a little bit bigger than what we normally do. So in today's video, I think as far as I'm going to get is showing you how we're going to make the folder, but I am going to go over all the rules and just everything that has to do with it. So um, buckle hey up. Guys, I am so sorry. Unfortunately, I don't even know what I was saying because <laughs> I started the video that in um, just a little bit late, but I thought I can at least get through it and there's no way. And then Dorian even got home earlier than he normally does because <laughs> he usually hangs out at school a little bit. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm done. Uh, yeah, Wednesdays are a really short day for me. But anyhow, um, I help at Miranda school and they also get out early. So it's just, and then I had other obligations where I have videos to make. So I'm so sorry, but this will definitely go out Thursday, hopefully. So you'll see it first thing, my first video I'll release. Um, so we're just talking about, um, you know, the swap, I hope. <laughs> and so it is going to be an ephemera folder that's a little bit larger than before. It'll be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So we'll walk through that. I, I just really want to impress on people. Do not put wooden paper clips or like really thick chipboard stickers or even just even like wood veneer items please not in these swaps i think it, it, it happens a lot and then they really take up a lot of space and you don't think they're you know they're pretty thin but a quarter inch is only like this much and if you're this thing's already taking up that much space and you're doing all these other it's just not great so my idea for this one is everyone's going to include five types of items and remember i said it's a thank you theme and i'm going to walk through it but i just want to tell you real quickly so the folders may be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter hopefully you follow my tutorial if you want to make your own that's fine but it has to only have two pockets on the inside no extra pockets or flaps or any of this other stuff it has to be like i open it the stuff is right there okay um and uh inside we're gonna have so five different items but three of each okay and it's all written out so the first three things uh, that are gonna be like tucked in the back are three five by seven pieces of the paper pack that you love you know whatever papers you would like to cut down i might even show you in this video how to cut down your paper so from one sheet of paper you get um four mats but um and that's if you want to share four different pieces of paper you do their four mats or sorry three papers four from each then you have your yours ready to go but each each folder each folder you're sending in four folders and then maybe i didn't mention that because again i'm already assuming you know a little bit about the ephemera folder swaps the way i do it so you're sending in four folders um, each of the four folders is going to have five categories, three of each category, okay? So the first category is, again, three five by seven mats, and um, just cut down, like I'll show you, I'm just gonna cut them down. Um, I mean, if you have a die that cuts five by seven, great, but it has to be five by seven, okay? Not like a little small piece of paper or like a big tall one that's folded over, it has to be a five by seven, and that's gonna be in the thing, and that's why I'm changing the size of the folder. The next three things are three large die cuts. So this can be like, I don't know, I just pull something here next week. Anything, but three large die cuts. So I would consider this a large die cut, right? Something big, mat layer type things, um, like Anna Griffin. Anything, anything that you consider a large die cut, right? That fits in the folder. Obviously, uh, if I had, you know, one of these guys, and this is kind of long, it's like a border die. But as long as it fits in that seven inches, that's a large die cut, right? It can be something layered. Um, a lot of times, the layers it does add more bulk, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So three large die cuts. 
um, three thank you sentiments. So it has to be sentiments and they have to say thank you and those are die cut. Okay. If I didn't say that in the instruction, I hope I will. Um, not really like cut apart so I say thank you or something like that. It needs to be three die cut sentiments that say thank you. If you only have one in your stash, make all three just different colors, you know, it, from the same die. That doesn't matter. So three sentiments that say thank you. And then you need three small die cuts, and I mean those can be like label dies or like a little bird or whatever it is that you want. It doesn't matter. This is going to be super open-ended. As long as there's the thank you things and you're following the theme, um, uh, you know, the thank you and then including the things I'm asking for, you're, you're good to go. Um, so three small die cuts. Again, they can be layered if it's like whatever, whatever goes with your paper pack, right? Don't just include some random stuff that's just like, oh, that's interesting. And then three embellishment items. And this is the one that scares me the most because that could be literally anything. I mean, you know, uh, little enamel things. Now, obviously these are thicker. I wouldn't include a whole pack like this. To be honest, I would cut through this and include like some, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be like everything, right? I mean, them like this or whatever um pearls uh, a little bit of ribbon and i said a little bit because you don't need it to be super bulky and making the package really thick and your folder really thick and bulky right um uh, what else I, I mean there's just so many um, cute paper clips that are like um in the shape of something i would include that as an embellishment item again nothing chipboard nothing wood veneer it has to be very thin um and the reason I'm saying wood veneer is because people will throw in like three or four of them and then it's just crazy. And I don't want to say, well, you can include one and then just don't do it. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, there's lots of things, guys. I don't know off the top of my head right now. We'll talk more about that later. But uh, three embellishment items. And that can be like, um, oh, like maybe like some of these, right? Some Tim Holtz words. And maybe you include like a strip of like, you know, a section of them or like um, these guys. So ephemera, you know, those kinds of things all count as embellishment items. Maybe I include just a strip of these and there's three of them and I say that's my three. I don't know. Generally people would include this as one, right? Um, but, you know, so be generous but stay within the guidelines and within um, the thickness is super important. And this time my minimums are my maximums. So five of the, those five categories, three in each category, don't include four here and, you know, six here and then what? No, three, 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 three. It has to be three and only three. Also, I have to go through the items and it can't just be everything like I, I can't I don't have the time to just go through every single thing that someone includes right so it needs to be those five things three of each um embellishment items can even be like if you have um glue dots that you like to share that you know that are like thin you know what I'm saying the ones that are packaged already like on a thing you can find them obviously from different companies um and like you know at the Dollar Tree things like that they're very flat and it's useful right so um whatever you would consider an embellishment item um little die cut flowers that are already uh generally with the embellishment items I'm assuming it's something that is already uh, purchased right that's usually a purchase thing not that you're making uh, flowers that are layered or something like that. It should be a purchased item. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I mean, they can be stickers, right? Like I have some really cute stickers. Um, oh gosh, do I have any here? <laughs> uh, that I get from like Amazon, like inexpensive, but they're really like fancy. I don't know how to explain it. Like uh, washi stickers or something like that, where it's like floral theme. Obviously if it matches your, your, what, what's going on. Um, I know like with Fitz Anna Griffin, maybe you want to include like three of her floral stickers and that's fine, but just keep everything relatively flat. I'll show you how to package things, how I would do it. Um, for this one, since the package is a little bit bigger, I do always have linked these bags right here and these are perfect. They're five and a half by just over seven. So like that five and a quarter by seven, um, uh, and a quarter that we're going to make the folder it will fit in here super easily. Um, and then just fold it over. And when we're talking about this, I have included in the instructions absolutely no, like, wrapped up in um, tissue or, like, with a bow on the outside or, like, a belly band on the actual folder. I'm talking about the folder. should not be decorated more than just having the clippy that we're going to put on it. And then when you're packaging it, please do not make this thick because then this ends up bending your folders. And, and this is just extra. Nobody, you know, this is nothing. So, to me, um, there are sleeves that I'll include in the description box that are, like, from Amazon, this kind, or po possibly the thinner ones. Actually, I I'm looking at them right now. I'll see if those are big enough. I think those are exactly, like, five and an eighth, so they might not work. At least the ones I get. 
if you're going to use like a goodie bag from like the Dollar Tree, you know, like the clear goodie bags, when you put it in, just fold it over like this. You know, I know those bags are kind of long. Um, don't like crunch it up and put like a bow and all this kind of stuff because that, again, it's bulk and it gets in the way and it's not necessary. Or just leave them in there like that. That's what the whole point of the clip. The little clippy goes on top and it really keeps things from falling out. So you don't have to put them in any kind of a package. But if you are, it needs to be something like this. Flat. Nothing else. No gift wrapping. No wrapped up in a way that I have to untie things no, you know, um, none of that. Um, I, I, I can say that and then it'll still happen. So I'm just really trying to be very clear about that. So nothing bulky like, again, uh, clothespin type clips or really thick clips, no chipboard, no, um, and with the chipboard thing, obviously there's chipboard that are much thinner. I'm really talking about wood veneer, okay? <laughs> so, or if you include stickers that are like super thick or something, like we're not doing any of that. A quarter inch is a quarter inch. And the thing is, four of those, a quarter inch, really fit into the boxes so nicely. And people always, you know, they're like, oh, you know, my things arrived and they're so great, you know, nice and crisp. Cause like, you don't want your folder to get all bent. Cause once paper bends, it doesn't really unbend, you know, and it looks gross. <laughs> <laughs> and usually what we do when we get them afterwards, we make like a folio for, to hold them and stuff. And you don't want your, what you sent in to be all bent and things, right? Um, even in the corner or whatever. So, and then once you have your four made from your favorite paper pack with a thank you theme, um, you know, maybe put in a sleeve and that's about it. You're going to put them, um, you know, you can send them in however you like. I know sometimes people put them in like a, just a bubble envelope. Um, just make sure they're really well protected if you're going to do that. Uh, I don't even know what that means because, again, I don't want you to put too much more. But if you're going to, you know, put like, let's say, bubble all around them and then put them in there, uh, that's okay. Obviously, I'm going to take that off. I'm not going to include that in your swap when it goes out. But um, I'm going to send it back to you in a small flat rate box. And those are 1020 right now. And I even looked into the future because this will be due, like, when I send it back to you, probably at the beginning of June, you know. Um, they will uh, fit in there nicely and that costs ten twenty, and you will include that cash. Don't PayPal me or Venmo. I don't have it. Well, I do have PayPal. I don't have any of these other apps and they always charge fees and all that. So just ten twenty in cash in the package when you send it in, right? Um, and then sometimes people want to include their info, which is great. Don't include a whole other card because again, that's more bulk. What you're going to do is just like literally a business size card, like a piece of paper with your information. If you want to print it out, make it cute, that's fine. But um, just know that might be visible on camera so if you're putting your actual address maybe you want to put it inside its own little or fold it over I don't know or turn it over right it needs to just not add bulk guys so if you want to include your info that's great I usually just print a label a little label and stick it on my folder itself and it just has my name so um, but again people have my information so they can contact me anyway if they wanted to but um, just keep that in mind um, no extras. Nothing outside the package. Oh, I also included pens for everybody. No, no, no extras. Everything has to be in here and literally flat. And you'll see what mine looks like when we're done. I mean, this is basically a quarter inch, a little bit thinner, but your folders can look like this. I've had folders when people send in. It's perfect. It has everything and it's this thin, you know? So again, a quarter inch isn't super thin, but it's not super thick either. It's about this much, right? I mean, you can get a lot in there. Just, uh, I know a lot of times what happens is the folders get real fat at the bottom and then they're skinny at the top. And including the clip, the clip we're doing an altered clip, um, a quarter inch including the clip. Okay, guys? So, um, or less, right? A quarter inch or less as far as the thickness. I'm just trying to say, please don't send in half inch thick um, items. Uh, please do not join if you live in a house that has uh, cigarette smokers. It really just permeates the paper and everything and I can smell it before I even open the box normally so um, please don't do that. It'll just go right back to you without being swapped out. And any swaps that break the rules, if they're super thick, if they're you know wrapped like I asked you not to because it's very simple. If you're afraid of that then just don't wrap them. You're good to go, right? Um, uh, the amount of items, it needs to be the five categories, the only three in each category, and of course follow the theme with your favorite paper pack and um, the thank you theme, right? And uh, what else, what else? I mean, there's lots of things, well, not lots of things, but there's things that you definitely need to pay attention to. Um, those are written out in the instructions. I'm going to go over them really quickly because I haven't really talked about timing. If you are interested, my email is in the description box and that's where you would sign up. I don't sign up through comments or through anywhere else. It has to be the email that I include in the description box and I think I'll leave this open for maybe 50 people which is still a big group I haven't done this in a while so I don't want to overwhelm myself too much right now um, but you'll receive basically 
these instructions, okay? And it's all there, you know, below your file the guidelines, please adhere to them as far as theme, sizing, basic components, please use your highest quality items. I'm just kind of skipping over things, there's more <laughs> information. And again, I don't screen for like, oh, let me see what you do on Instagram, or how are your YouTube videos, or this kind of thing. So the reason I have my rules, and I'm very much sticking to them, is because everybody should start off at least having the same amount of items. Um, use your best quality items. I'm not going to look at something and be like, ooh, that's not looking great, or oh, that's not my style. I don't care about that. It has to meet the minimum and maximum criteria, right? So um, that's the way we do it. So that's the fairest is what I, I'm trying to say. Also, please do not make your swap folders so thick that four of them will not comfortably fit in a USPS. I understand. Sometimes they fit in there and people really shove them in there comfortably. They can't be, like, super tight, guys, um, in the small flat rate box. And, of course, they should be a maximum quarter inch thick, th clip and all. Um, and we like to add all kinds of extra goodies, but we need to keep in mind how the swap is actually done and shipped out, so please don't do that. Um, again, please know if you live in a house with cigarettes, smoke, all that stuff. So... Uh, please send in your swap postmark no later than May 27th. That is a Saturday, and that means do not take it after they've closed on Saturday and try to act like that went out. It doesn't actually go out until Monday, and it's behind. I'm telling you, everybody who sends out Saturday, even if they live on the East Coast, I live on the West Coast, are usually in by Monday, if not Tuesday, because they're still processing things, even though they're not delivering on Sunday, right? So usually I get those Monday, Tuesday. You didn't actually send off until Monday. Maybe it comes in Thursday, and, like, the whole group is being held back, or something happens to it, because this is typical. I don't know why <laughs> someone sends it late, and there's issues at the post office. So it's like, why? You know, why didn't they just do it in a timely manner? Like, even today, I was expecting yesterday a package from HSN, and they're like, oh, we're going to keep it an extra day. It's like, why? So I'm not going to get it till today. And and um, that's a bummer. But again, sometimes things happen and then they don't update the tracking. So I don't know when it's actually coming. So I don't wait for it, guys. And I think that's just fair. And I'm sorry because the rules are very clear. You need to send it by the 27th postmark on the 27th, not postmark the Monday, you know, even though you dropped it off on Saturday or whatever. Um, or if you're the type that prints and clicks the click and print, whatever it's called at home, it has to go out during the day, that day, you know, before they close, please. Um, how you send it is up to you, but your swap will be sent back, you know, in the USPS small flat rate box to cost 1020 and then I talked there about including the cash with your swap um, and then again you know the swap will be four thank you folders filled with a ma minimum slash maximum of 15 pieces of ephemera requirements the final foil dimensions will be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter I say everything I just said right now if you're making your own it has to be super simple but you know it'd be nice if you followed my tutorial um, and no belly bands do not laminate the folders don't add anything else other than your altered paper clip and it could be a hidden altered paper clip and we'll get to that in just a minute um, or just a paper clip that you alter, you know how people do. Uh, the folders can be inserted in a close-fitting sleeve, but not wrapped in tissue or large bulky bags, etc. I hope that makes sense. Um, each folder, number two, must contain, I mean, there's only three rules here, guys. <laughs> um, each folder must contain a minimum maximum of 15 pieces of ephemera, as discussed. This includes three 5x7 pieces of cardstock cut from your favorite paper pad, three large die cuts, three sentiments in the thank you theme, three small die cuts, and three embellishment type items uh, slash ephemera pieces, right? Just like uh, those kind of things. These items need to be relatively flat and follow the thank you favorite paper pad theme, like whatever according to the paper pad, basically. No chipboard slash super thick embellishment items or large clips. Um, 15 pieces in total, three of each of five categories listed. No more and no less, okay? And then um, the folders will each be closed by coordinating ultra paper clip. The size and design of the paper clip uh, is totally up to you. However, please keep them relatively flat, decorated more than just paper. I mean, they should have at least like three embellishment items or components on there, like very low profile, flat flowers, uh, flourishes, stickers, washi accents, rhinestones, pearls, stamping, etc. All those things count as one embellishment item, you know, other than the paper itself, whatever you, the, the clippy is on. Uh, the paper itself does not count as an embellishment, okay? And then there we go, four folder and paper clips do not have to be the same, just follow the thank you. Like, you know, obviously, if you have a paper pad and you have one sheet of this paper and one sheet of that, because each folder is going to take a whole 12 inch square piece of paper at least. Um, you know, you have two and two, right? Or you only have two of each, or sometimes we have four, it depends on the company, right? But they don't have to be exactly the same. 
Uh, and then again, about thanking you, we just use a small card, and after the swaps arrive, we'll do a live premiere, and there's some other info there, and the live premiere will not include rule breakers, guys. So, I hope that was a kind of a quick synopsis. It's always fun, and these are really great, because just pull out the dies that you have, your cricket, whatever, and, you know, get your things cut. If you aren't great at cutting 5x7s and you feel that that's scary, then, you know, use a machine or use a die. Like, even the Cricut, you can put 5x7 rectangle and it'll cut them for you, you know. So, um, lots of ways to do that nicely and neatly. Just best foot forward, best quality uh, supplies. I always encourage that. I mean, I'm probably going to do Anna Griffin folders because I'm very Anna mood right now, and I think it's going to be really pretty. It's whatever you want. Again, I have tons of thank you uh, dies. Actually, one of the things I was like, ah, I wanted to use was the large sentiment dies from Diamond Press, from Diamond Press that they just put out. I didn't receive them for review because they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I guess we missed putting that in the box, you know, kind of thing. I still want those, so I order them, and they have the thank you kind of sentiments in there, which I really love. Um... I guess I, what I can answer is while well, we're die cutting, if you have thank and you separate, obviously that's one sentiment. I'm not going to say, oh, that's two pieces of paper that already, that's five now or whatever. Like to finish your sentiment, right? If that's how your sentiment is, like even with the dime press, that big and then thank and then like you in the front, that's fine. Um, if you want to stick them together already, that's fine too, or just leave them loose. Um, I usually use little bags. Uh, of course, I don't see one right now to package individual things. I'll just link them, but they're like um, glassine bags. Just they're really nice and flat. The whole thing's nice and flat. Or you know, if you have little clear bags, that's fine too. Um, so we'll talk all about that. But if you're familiar with my swaps, I think you kind of know where we're going, what we're doing. And then, like I said, your altered paper clip that holds your folder together at the top. Um, it can be as long as the folder. I don't care. Um, I know once one of my friends made some really gorgeous clippies, but they were just really bulky, and that was the issue with that. So if you want to make a big, long clip, and you think that looks cute, and that's what, you know, it's not too bulky already, your folder down here, that it can go all the way down to the bottom and not be a problem, then do that. And then, again, really nice and flat. Decorated, yes, but nice and flat. Um, if you want to make a little tiny one, a little, just a little thing on the I don't care. It's your thing, the paper clip, there's no rules other than that it should be embellished with at least three items other than the paper that made it, right? Uh, and we'll get to that. We'll talk about those. I have tons of videos on ultra paper clips. There are tons out in the um, interwebs there you can check out. So uh, again, just make sure that they're relatively flat, right? We don't want to break rules just because the paper clip had like a mulberry rose on it that's like this thick. Like we're not doing that, you know? Um, I'm going to grab some paper, and if I think of anything else, I will uh, throw it in as we're creating. But just, you know, kind of see what I'm doing, and then you'll you'll get the flavor of what's going on. I think today, like I said, we'll just make the folder and the 5x7s. And then in the next video is going to be a longer video. It's just that I talk so much at the beginning about everything. And like I always say at the top, and I totally forgot, please listen to every word I'm saying. The information is here in the video. That's why I do this. And then it's also in the instructions. But the instructions are very quick little synopsis, right? And I know people end up, you know, breaking the rules. And people are like, oh, why don't you just do like a bullet point? I'm like, I do do a bullet point. And then that wasn't enough. So I started doing paragraphs. And then apparently that's not enough words. But then in the videos, people don't watch the whole video. So they miss things. So please watch the whole video. I'll probably put a little warning notice in the, for this one. But um, at the beginning, since I didn't say that, it's been a while. I forgot my, my general rules that I try to say at the very beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, even right now I'm looking at, I have some, uh, what's that stuff called? Um, like gold flake and things, or gold and silver, like that cool flake stuff. Put some of that in like a little baggie. That's a nice embellishment item, you know? Um, I mean, there's lots of things, lots of ways that you can um, share your stash and, you know, have fun with this. But again, just keep it flat. <laughs> That's literally all I care about. It needs to be pretty flat. Um, all right, guys. Well, let me grab some paper. And uh, again, my email's in the description box. And if it fills up, it will say that in the title, not this video title, because obviously I made the video, it's already there. But at the very, you know, when you click on, oh, watch this video, the title uh, YouTube has will say that it's filled uh, or it's closed or completely full. And then I'll also update the description box with that same information saying it's full. So please, once it's full, there's no need to, um, you know, try to get in at that point because it's full. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So have fun. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to go pull some pretty papers. I don't know exactly which paper pad or whatever I'll be using. Um, and then I, I do get this question from people. How about just plain paper? And do not send in just plain paper. It has to be from a paper pad, a collection, you know. Um, a lot of times collections, when I buy them from like C uh, CNN, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I don't even watch CNN. Uh, Crafter's Companion. Um... I was going to say CC. Anyway, uh, 
you it, it comes with embellishment items or other things right so or other dies that go along with it you know that kind of stuff so again the large die all die cuts i don't care what they are if they're shapes if they're um, label type dies if they're like matte layers if they're fancy like frames i don't care just three large die cuts you know big something big that fits you know a lot of the space and three smaller ones whatever that is for you um but okay let me pull my paper pad and if you have any questions ask them here or ask them when you email uh, is probably better because a lot of times my comments get buried so uh, when you email you can ask them there but um, please really watch the videos and read the instructions and then if you have a question ask because um again just it took me two weeks to get this video out thinking i was going to do it i just i'm so slammed right now on time it's ridiculous um okay but let's get started okay, so i went over to kind of where i keep most of my anagraphin stash and this is one of the first things i saw and i thought this is very springy very pretty and i'm like which one is this <laughs> it's china cabinet uh paper craft collection or kit or however so i have obviously my 12 inch papers and you know it's funny because this does come with five by sevens now of course you know there's only like two of each and if i were to just pick some out you know where's the fun in that but you can definitely do that you already have them cut you know great but um i don't have enough anyway so they're all kind of the same so i'll put those to the side for now it does come with, you know, ephemera and stickers and other things, but we'll talk about that later. So let's just put those to the side. In the meantime, I really didn't have time to do this, but I was like, oh, I should make a Cricut cut file. <laughs> so while Miranda was getting ready for school, I pulled one together, and then I realized I did it in a weird way. I'm like, oh, that's not how I usually make my folders. So I had to, like, scrap it and kind of redo it. Whenever I learn a little bit about Cricut and then I redo something, it makes it that much easier the second time because um, I already know what I did the first time, and all I had to do is just kind of adapt in what my new idea you know whatever it was so i was looking at this and a lot of these papers don't really lend themselves oh this one would be cute to um a folder but i think i'll go with this these this one and maybe the recipient will be able to cut it up and use it for something else too i mean these are amazing papers super gorgeous like i said use your best um quality items i'm not saying everyone has to do Anna Griffin or you know anything else it's whatever your favorite paper collection is the folder absolutely needs to be made by heavier than layering weight paper I mean this is good weight card so it's probably 85 pound I don't think this is 350 like not close but um, GSM so it's probably close to like 200 some odd GSM um, but I think this can be the outside of the folder see how they're the same but different colors and this will be the inside or if you're gonna make a really awesome um, paper clip your ultra paper clip and you want it to be on the outside to accent you know being like a plain kind of design go for it and i'm not saying your paper can't be double-sided in a way that's just white on one side or whatever of course you can do that what i'm saying is it needs to be a paper collection it can't just be rainbow color papers and red yellow orange because that's what i have you know kind of thing um it has to be a paper collection guys also quick mention on my cricut file i'm going to link it there it's free of course they're always free <laughs> um it's a little bit smaller in the amount of paper because um if we start off with the 12 inch cricket's going to want to cut it you know whatever it might not work for us so i made that one 11 and 3 quarter inch paper wide and then um still 10 and a quarter inch deep and then the pocket's gonna be three inches and, and the you know the score lines uh, the final dimensions will be the five and a half by seven and a quarter five and a quarter excuse me by seven and a quarter but i don't want you to confuse with what i'm saying now because what i'm saying now is going to be different from the cut file but just by a little bit just so that the machine can just do its cuts and and not have to deal with a 12 inch piece of paper i don't even know does it cut 12 inches it might cut to the 12 inch but i forget if it tells you like oh that's too big or whatever so since this folder is a little different than what we've done in the past i don't know what that was um i'm going to keep it 12 inches wide just one less cut to make okay and we are going to still cut it in the other direction so the width is going to be you know how you want your paper facing we're going to fold this like this so i mean this is fine um it needs to be 10 and a quarter inches deep because we're gonna have a three inch pocket once you fold up the three inch pocket you have seven and a quarter inch folder so ten and a quarter inches so i'm just going to take my guillotine and just go for it and you know look at your paper and judge if there's a certain spot you want to cut it at either way it needs to be ten and a quarter inches so let me see what that looks like here if i was to just put it on here ten and a quarter like where does that end up as long as it kind of looks nice oh yeah i mean we are going to score this at uh like around here so 
Yeah, I mean, that's fine for me. I made the pockets three inches tall. If you want to keep this whole thing and make your pockets taller, that's fine. It's just that when you put little things in, they might get lost in those pockets. So I didn't want my pockets to be too tall. Um, that's what I went with. So ten and a quarter. And I'm just coming up with these numbers kind of as I was working on the Cricut, like in my head. So hopefully we work out. And a piece of paper like this can definitely make your altered paper clip or hidden altered paper clip. And honestly, even the way it's just framed out, I can maybe trim a little bit off of this. What a perfect thing to do. <gasps> okay, well, we're going to have one like that left over from all the papers. So again, the paper clip part we will talk about at the end. So right now our paper is 12 inches wide, 10 and a quarter inches deep. Okay. So let me get a bigger scoring board. I don't mean longer, this one is not quite what I was thinking. I just meant bigger, but okay. So I'm gonna turn this over because I like to score and then fold towards that so the paper that I want facing out is down now, but that part doesn't matter. On the 12 inches wide, we are gonna score five and, and a half. So when you think about it, this is going to be five and a quarter inches wide when we're done. So five and a quarter plus five and a quarter is 10 and a half. That means we still have an inch and a half left, all right, with the 12 inches. So to split the inch and a half and make like a nice sturdy base or side piece here, um, I'm just going to score all the way down from three quarters inch, all the way down. So again, three quarters on this side. And on the other side, if you don't flip your paper, that happens to be 11 and a quarter. So 11 and a quarter and three quarters, right? So you have three quarter um, score marks on either side. Now we're gonna turn it, and this is the top of my paper. So that's the top. And literally all we're gonna do is, well, we still need one more score line in the middle. I'm sorry, guys. Let's just finish this up and we'll go back to the middle in a second. Uh, here, just seven and a quarter from the top. So that score line, that's really easy, right? Now let's go back to the middle, and before I confuse everybody, I'm just gonna come up with a number of what's the middle. I suppose you can just score it at six inches, but I don't know about that. Huh, that's funny, let's think about it. I guess so, right? I mean, why not? <laughs> so that makes it easy enough. Um, just to make sure, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and a quarter, yeah. Okay, just down to six inches since it's a 12 inch piece of paper. I had to do math on this on the Cricut because it wasn't uh, 12 inches, it was 11 and three quarters inches wide. So that's why in my mind I'm like, oh, we have math to do, but you really don't. So let's talk about those score lines again. I'm just gonna fold this right quick in the center. And again, you know, I'm not trusting that my scoring was perfect, so I'm still butting up the edges of my paper together over here. So let's talk about this again. 12 inches wide, 10 and a quarter inches deep, scoring at three quarter, six inches, and 11 and a quarter. And on the opposite direction, we're only scoring at three and a quarter. So, or seven and a quarter, my goodness, seven and a quarter, you guys. I'm a little tripped up today. All right, I like to cut mine when I have it folded like this, just to make the pocket a little more decorative. You can do whatever you want. On the Cricut, I literally just had it divoted like this. But you know, you can come in and you can do like a little rounded corner to make your pocket. I am feeling where my score line is, right? Where I scored, because that's where you want this. So I start there. And sometimes I'll do something fun. I'll kind of go up and then I'm holding both pieces. Just kind of do like a little pokey up like this and then back down around. And this is all just for fun, <laughs> right? That's my pocket. It has a little decorative edge that I just made right now. Um, no big deal. So when we open it up, we have a couple more cuts to make. We're gonna remove this, and I guess you could do it at the same time, but it's kind of harder for me to see what's going on out here. So um, on, we're gonna remove this bottom quadrant that we made by scoring. So just straight up on that line. And then we're gonna notch a little bit away here so it's not just in the way when we go to fold our stuff. This is larger than I used to do. I usually um, make this border area half an inch but again we have different numbers today so again little notch right to that score line and then right up this score line as well as you can and then we're also going to go ahead and take a moment to fold this guy in and we're pretty much done with the folder the folders are like sis bam boom whatever i don't know <laughs> you get them done pretty quick okay and then these guys i'll fold them up and they should be separate from each other, but if they're stuck together, I like to fold them at the same time. That way it doesn't like just tear in the center there. And then we have a pretty folder. Now we have some gluing to do. 
And you can also wait until you're done gluing or do this now. It just kind of give them a nice scoring. And that is a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter inch folder. If you measure it, it is legit seven and a quarter here, five and a quarter that way. And you're going to make four of those because I do get this question off that people email me later and say, I don't quite understand. Am I making one and then, you know, no, you're making four. Four. So when I come back in the next video, I'll have all four of mine made. But for right now, we're working on this one. And then I'm going to show you how to do the five by seven cut aparts. Of course, you can do whatever you want. If you want to waste a little paper, you can just do it real easily. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, otherwise, you can do a little trick. I had seen Anna do, I don't even know, because I was like, when have I ever watched Anna videos? Like, I really haven't. But it must have been like 10 years ago or something, whenever I was really scrapbooking, actually, more than that. So on this one, what I like to do is just kind of hold my pocket and just come in here and just cut straight across where the pocket would glue. And then just divot this away, just because it looks nicer. But if you don't want to divot that away, then don't. Just leave it. Okay, so same thing on this side. Just kind of go in here and go in there and that's it and then we're just going to glue this down you know i'm going to use my nuvo because i know it sets up pretty pretty fast and so we put some glue on underneath this tab okay so underneath on the top tab and on this bottom tab you're putting the glue on top because you want it to hold your pocket down and so you can just hold them down at the same time. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Glue down here, glue up here, and then hold that down. Okay guys, hold on. I was, thought I was ready to go, but I was gonna grab something. So this is your basic folder. And I made it, you know, a little fancy by just doing a little something with my die cutting, or with my die cutting, with my <laughs> scissors. Some people die cut, you know, this little top part or like, um, use like a border punch. If I was gonna use a border punch, I would have done it when it was still open. Just punch, 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 and then go for it. If you're doing a border punch, a lot of times it takes like a quarter to half inch off the top of the paper. So maybe you wanna make your pocket like four inches deep, you know, do the cutting. And then when you fold it up, it'll probably be like three and a half inches or three and three quarter inches deep, you know. Um, if I was to do that now, it'd be like really low sometimes. So just depends on your border punch if you even have any, right? I don't know. Some people don't and they don't do it and that's fine. <laughs> or you can just cut it straight down the center. You know, it's whatever you would like to do. Okay, so I like to corner round. So you don't have to, this is not necessary. If you have a corner rounder and you want to use it, you know, great. So I usually use the, the half inch side and I just like the way that looks a little more elegant. Again, do not uh, laminate these. Do not make a belly band for it. You have the paper clip that we're doing and that's what's going to be holding this guy closed. Decorate it however you like. If you're putting charms on it, just make sure the charms aren't super bulky, you know, like, Again, the point is that this arrives to the person safely, that the stuff inside arrives safely. I, my pet peeve is when I get bent stuff and it's just, it just doesn't unbend. I mean, sometimes you can glue it down, but it just depends on what the item is, right? So just really, we're taking care of the ephemera that's inside, not so much the decoration, all the stuff that, you know, kind of, um, decorative right that's just extra um so we're just really want to make sure that everything that goes in here is going to be well taken care of and that's basically why i made a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter thing because i would really like the paper to be five by seven but if you put it in a five by seven fold it might get squished on the sides or the edges so i gave it a little bit of room to breathe you know i like the way this looks this is very pretty okay so uh four of the folders right again they don't have to be exactly the same obviously in my paper pack i have two and two or there's two of each page you know uh so there's that and we need to choose some paper that we want to share. So um, let's go with one of these. So I'm going to cut this up and I'm just going for it, you guys. So hopefully I do this okay. And actually, now that I think about it, where I might have to do um, a new paper trimmer blade. I'll be right back. I was just thinking, like, where are my Fisker's replacements? I took them off because I was like, stop using this because <laughs> it would um, make my paper all fluffy, you know what I'm saying? When the blade's not sharp, it just like destroys your paper and gives it all kinds of burrs and it's just horrible. Um, so I just removed them so I wouldn't use it because knowing me, I'll forget and I'll go and use it, you know? So I hope my tonic ones are nice and fresh. If not, I do have replacements. Um, there's a lot of little stuff stuck in here. I don't know if you can see that. And that's not the greatest thing. So if I can get something skinny like this to help me 
pull out those little burrs. Let me take a moment to clean this out just to make sure everything's good to go because I do not want to damage my papers. This is probably something you can put on the Cricut and if I was going to do this on the Cricut and I paid for access because I can't just have a line that cuts, um, I'm sure there's a way I can figure it out, but it's not free, right? <laughs> so maybe I can do like five by seven rectangles and um, just place them in the right spot. The only thing is, again, that 12 inch line, I forget if Cricut will actually go to the 12 inches, so they might tell me it's outside the line, which is a bummer. So I would just want to use cut lines, just like you would use um, score lines. Just place them and then just group them and then put your 12 by 12 piece of paper and uh, let it cut, you know, just on the lines. But I don't know. I don't know how Cricut handles that. Anyway, I'll be so, right back. Over create weekend, Anna um, had mentioned something. Oh, we need mats, right? And I was not using the dies for that because it's just gonna waste paper. Because I think what people don't understand, like in this one video I had made, uh, this uh, a person had told He's me that um, speaking oh, uh, for the A2 card uh, paper that I had cut down the other day, um, I had said I wasn't I was doing it a certain way because I was using a die or not using a die. So um, with the five by seven mats with Anna Griffin, I was just cutting it because I'm like, why am I gonna use extra paper to put a die to run it through? I can just cut it you know because you do need to have a little lip around your die or else if the die moves at all you're not going to be in great shape you know um but somebody had told me like oh if you cut an a2 and half and a half that's um, well i know that but that wasn't <laughs> i needed a little extra for the die that's why i couldn't just cut it to what i wanted you know anyway um so I was just cutting my own mats, and I had men made mention of that. I'm like, oh, you can get three mats from one piece of paper, right? If you were to cut it to seven inches, then five and five, you're gonna have a two by seven inch strip. And then over here, you already cut it seven, so there's five left, right? Seven plus five is 12. That's why it works on a 12 by 12. And then you're gonna cut it at seven, but you're gonna be left with a piece that's a five inch square. Um, and then I thought, oh, or you can do Anna's trick. Um, and then people are like, well, what's Anna's trick? And I'm like, <laughs> it's hard to explain typing it out, but basically it's like a pinwheel kind of, of five by sevens, you know? And then she came back like two minutes later and, and showed that exact thing. But she had marked it with like a Sharpie so people can see it. And I do not want to mark this with Sharpie or pencil or anything else. So we're just going to think about it wisely and just go for it. You're going to end up with a little two inch circle, actually uh, a circle, a square in the center. And it's so funny because I was just thinking about it. I'm like, why is there a square in the center? That's so weird because it's five by set, five plus seven is 12, five plus seven is 12. Um, it's because in some areas you're going to have five butting up against five, right? So that leaves a little piece, five butting up against five. And so it's a basically a two inch square from the five part. Okay. Hope that makes sense. This is why you need a paper trimmer though, because, um, the other thing is you want to think about where your paper directions are, you know, possibly they're going to be some this way and some this way, you know, um, that's just how it's going to be. So. I'm going to go to seven inches. I'm lining up my paper at seven inches right now. This is just my first cut. It could just be random. You can line up at five, whatever you want to start with. So I'm lining up at seven. When I bring this down, I'm going to bring this down to uh, five inches and then we're going to stop cutting. So I'm just going to bring this down to five and I'm using my little arrows to help me. The little arrows on this guide. I love that. They're super precise. There's five. So I have my first cut. It is seven over five inches down. I'm going to turn my paper. If I want to complete, just cut this away right now. What I'm going to do is bring this over here. I'm going to line this up again at seven because we're making like a pinwheel of, um, was really loud and I just, when I went to do that, I just kind of rearranged this. So we're going to line up at seven again, because this time that's going to leave five inches over here. And when I cut this off, I'm going to have a five by seven piece already okay and um it's a little scary but you know it's fine so we're gonna start up here and i'm gonna bring it down to seven and i don't know if it's in my if you can see it but i'm gonna bring it down to right here so we're at seven over here and it's just mat if, if you're looking at it i don't think it's confusing because obviously you want to get five by seven mats look at that there's my first five by seven okay very good now this is already seven inches tall because we know that we just cut it seven inches so we can bring this over and i mean you basically want to cut the five off of this so i'm going to line it up again this edge at seven so it leaves me this five inch piece over here and this time i can just go because we already did the math on the other one here's my second five by seven now we have a piece of paper that looks like this again it's going to leave this little square in the center so don't let that 
throw you off or bother you. We already know this is seven inches tall. <laughs> so we're going to cut again. So it's five inches left over here. Lining it up at seven again. Isn't that fun? I bet you if you started lining up at five, 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 you'd do that every time. But since I started at seven, it seems like every time seven's the number and I don't have to worry about anything. I just give it a cut. There's my third five by seven. Now we have this one left and it just has this little chunk left <laughs> and i bet you if i you know did whatever i'd probably line up at seven again but this time we're going to line this one up at five it's the last piece so again we are eyeballing this because it's a you know a trimmer a paper trimmer so you're the one you know kind of lining it up where you think it should go last five by seven and you have this little square look it is a perfect little one and it's so funny i bet you you're like the way they di do their digital, you know, designing the images, I think it's funny that right in the center it's just this gorgeous little plate. Um, one sheet of paper, four five by sevens. One of each is going to go into my folders, and I'm going to get two more pieces of paper and do the exact same thing. So I end up with three five by sevens is what we want in our folders. So I'll be right back. I do this. I mean, the only one that's scary, the first one, is just making that cut. Um, where you line it up and you're going to like five. I think that's probably the scariest one. I have it lined up at seven by five right here. And then when you come around here and then after that, it's just, you know, seven, seven, seven until we got to the five. So again, seven. So I can finish cutting this five by seven. And this one, I also have to be careful just to go right to seven. And then, I mean, if this loosens up, that's it. We stop cutting and I'll just keep working. This one's already seven. So I need to go line it up at seven here to leave that five inches left on the other side. And I don't even have to think about it. I mean, look how quick that was, right? <laughs> I mean, here we go. Here we go. And then one more. And this one I'll line it up up here just to make sure I'm uh, lined up really well with that little piece. I mean, well, how long was that? 30 seconds? 40 seconds? <laughs> All right, I'll be back. So, just made my choices. Got those guys cut. And some, some of these have foil on the back. Um, this one I put foil at the top. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, this one has that gorgeous foil on the back. But I meant for it to be like this. But, you know, obviously the person can use it however they want. And this one just has, like, a little design on the back. So, three five by sevens in each folder. And if we were cutting this correctly, we will be able to put these in here and they will be nice and protected, not touching the edge too much and not sticking out of the top too much either. But I can kind of tuck that in a little bit. Of course I corner rounded, so that little corner is up. Uh, I can adjust that by bringing that in, I suppose. Yeah, that's better. Um, okay, so that's all we're gonna do in today's video because I know this video is long enough, I can feel it. So in the next video, I will do my three large die cuts my three sentiments, my three small die cuts, and then adding, you know, three embellishment type things. Um, again, I'm not going to sit here and measure something to say what's large or small as far as die cuts. Three larger die cuts and three smaller ones, whatever that is. If it's, you know, if you have like oval die cuts that are like usually a two size or uh, whatever it is that you're cutting. Um, you know, a big flower, I, I don't know. I, to me, it's mats, but, you know, it's going to be whatever you want. Three large die cuts. Again, I have those border ones that would work really well. Um, just three of them that are large. They can be layered. I would just caution with the layers, because once you're layering and layering, you have so many, and then you have six die cuts that are layered, it starts adding. I mean, even this, you know, it adds bulk, you guys. Every little thing you add <laughs> adds bulk, so just be careful. Um, our three sentiments. Um... You know, as long as you have three die cuts that are larger and then three die cuts that are smaller than the three larger ones, that's all I'm asking for as far as those. And then your three sentiments and again, your three embellishment items. And of course you can put them wherever you want in the pockets. And um, that's that. Sometimes people will put a little clippy up here or something to hold something up higher or maybe even tape it down. Um, that's fine. As long as it's just like a very basic clip that's not like a chunky one. Nothing like this. I don't, <laughs> because that happens. And I mean, look at... No. Okay. Obviously not. And I've seen it many times, so please don't use those. I'm talking about just a basic clip. Maybe it has a shape, but it's still flat like a basic office paper clip, you know? Um, that's fine, because that reduces the bulk down here and brings things up. I understand. You know, people, whatever it is to make it work. Uh, but let's just use common sense, guys. Um, again, I know we're very uh, generous, and generosity is great, but also you don't want the stuff to get smashed. That's the whole point. I wouldn't want this to come to my house and be, like, all bent. Because it, it's it's just sometimes impossible to unbend. So just uh, have fun. 
email me. I didn't say when the email sign up is going to end, so um, I don't even know what day today is. Uh, let's say... Uh, whatever day Saturday is but again if it fills up before that I will let you guys know so I'll have the date there you email me I email back with either oh, I'm sorry it's full but right now obviously at the beginning it's going to be with the instructions I'll attach them as a you know instructions there and um, you can read them over second video is going to show you the rest of the stuff um, I might be leaving too much for the second video maybe the third video yeah I will probably be three videos because that's already a lot for the second one Maybe the third video is embellishments and paperclip and then, you know, packaging it. Um, let's do that because that's kind of a lot for the second video. Um, so uh, I'll come back. I'll have my folders ready and waiting for the next step. And then I'll email you back with the info and um, mailing info, all that stuff, guys. It'll all be there. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and have fun. Again, it's a, your favorite paper collection. Uh, thank you, ephemera folders. So um, it's worded something like that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.